Um, I've got to say sorry for Jason not turning up this evening. Um, as you know, you probably had a job offer on. Um, we'd have been crazy to let down. Um, I actually joked with Gemma a couple of weeks ago that I was going to ask Jason in the crowd whether traditional helicopters and the work he does from traditional helicopters was affecting his work. Um, with people like me shooting from drones, obviously he's working today and I'm here talking, so I've probably, <laughs> probably answered that question myself. Um, so, what do we go on to? Uh, first things up, um, I've been a photographer for about 20 years, um, and I've been submitting uh, as a contributor to Getty Images for around six years. Um, my main inspiration, Andreas Gursky. Um, from about 1996, I've become literally transfixed by his work ethos. Uh, the subject matter, technique, and vision make for epic life moments that demand the viewer's attention. Uh, this slide shows some technology I was using in 1996. Um, I basically, traditional schooling at the time, uh, photography and art weren't really covering what I wanted to do. I wanted to touch on digital media. So I found a course that was managing digital media. And these are the things I was basically working with, like uh, 120 cameras, scanners, Photoshop 2 and 3, which were on floppy disks. Um, this is a really early piece of work I did. I was actually, uh, one of my uh, first pieces of inspiration that came from art was the Futurism and Cubism movements. Um, and the artist Umberto Boccioni really inspired me with the ways he created dynamic images from really still subject matter. Um, and those, they were exhibited in the AOP gallery in 1999, which is a long time ago. Um, this image, I love tweaking the world. Um, the places I go with my camera rarely look the way I want, so I tweak aspects subtly using composite techniques. Uh, this shot was on a grey day, so I'll never let the weather on a day let me down, and I'll always go out shooting skies to have a little library for sky swaps. Um, my only other mantra when creating images for stock is to not spend any money doing it. Um, there's high budget, mid budget, low budget, and then my chosen field of no budget photography. <laughs> uh, my only brief is to not invest money shooting, that way if I sell anything I always feel like I'm winning. And the only loss is my time really, which I love being out with my camera. Um, I love walking London streets, camera in hand, any spare time I find, night or day, and I'll literally loiter around the spot until all those elements come into place, whether that be people, cars, sunlight, animals, cloud movement, or whatever it, whatever it takes to literally make the shot. Uh, and then that moves me on to a few more pictures, examples. Um, architecture, music, I love raving, getting out of my camera, seeing people, uh, and I'm always also looking for the highest point to shoot from. Uh, which will lead me on to my latest project, I suppose my passion into aerial photography, which I've been working on for the last 16 months or so. And that will take you on. There's some examples here of what I came across about 16 months ago was a, uh, a drone on YouTube. I was actually looking for a, a way of mounting a camera to a kite or a helium balloon. And I had some failed attempts over Hampstead Heath trying to shoot, uh, chasing a balloon around uh, in the wind. So uh, I came across these drones and... It's, yeah, nothing's changed since. I've literally been just chasing this since. Um, where are we? Hobby days. Uh, this was basically when I was building. So when I was actually building the copters, experimenting and actually playing around with them. Learned a lot of geeky stuff, um, but quickly learnt that I was going to require a licence to shoot commercially, certainly in the UK and in Europe. So Getty kindly got behind me and they've, they saw what I was doing with the hobby and they've kindly kind of sponsored back to me to do the course with the Civil Aviation Authority. And that course involved coursework, ground school days, a written theory exam of 25,000 words, and a flight test. And now my licence now allows me for flying in the UK and Europe with special permissions. Um, and that course was a really amazing glimpse into the future of, of drones and UAVs or unmanned aerial vehicles. Um, the main draws media, but also saw things like uh, search and rescue, uh, agriculture, communication, mapping, delivery, etc., etc. The main draw being areas such as advertising, reportage, and assignments. Um, there's about 500 of me in Europe currently, and that's split. There's half a billion dollars of revenue a year being split between those 500 people a year. Ba -ba -ba, that's me on the course. Um, now I've got my license. Um, it doesn't give me basically a blanket reason to go out and fly. I can't go and fly down Oxford Street in the middle of the night. Um, so there's limitations I've got to follow. Things like 400 feet max altitude, which gives me separation between me and manned aircraft. Um, I've always got to fly the craft within line of sight so I can actually see it. Um, and when I go out on a site, I'll actually have to check um, the site, the map, so I can see if I'm flying in any uh, demilitarised zones or in air traffic areas. This is an example, a quick video of a clip of where it all goes wrong and why you need a licence. Um, 
Everything about my course was based around safety, and the last 1% was about actually taking pictures. Um, and there's an example of what can go wrong when 11 kilos of octocopter lands on someone's head. Um, and here's some qu examples of work. Um, quick, 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 flick through these. Uh, that's a picture I took I, uh, about six months ago. I wanted to, t uh, my mum uh, swims in uh, Hampstead Ponds. Um, and I wanted to create a really large A2 image for a study wall, um, which I managed to capture from one of my hexacopters back then. And the next one, and we're on to uh, community allotment. Uh, this was shot from above. I love the graphic nature of the, the, the bird's eye view. So looking down on things uh, creates, basically, it's like looking at the world in a, different, in a, in a very different way. Uh, and these hexacopters have been literally the perfect tool for me to do that. And I'm moving on to another example of image shot. Oh, this was, uh, was shot on my lunch hour, crept out for a quick sandwich up in Regent's Park. Um, as a photographer, I've been walking around Regent's Park trying to capture its essence all my life and never been able to get it. Sent a copter up 100 feet and I managed to capture the whole of the park, London, all of the Regency houses, all of the people on the path, and I felt like I cracked it. Um, this is a kind of, this is me flying. This is me flying the copter. And you'll see, as it flies into the sun, you'll now see the footage from the copter. So you can see kind of what I'm doing and how, what, what can be caught off it. Um, you'll notice the very stabilised nature of the footage. Um, it's a bit like having a steady cam on the bottom of the camera. So everything's like flying, it's basically like flying a magic carpet. It's amazing. Um, and on my travels, um, I've come across a new term, which is dronies. You've probably all heard of the term selfie. Um, well, as I'm out and about, um, I've always wanted a dog, but I've now found myself with these drones. And I'm out and about these things, and people will come up to me and say, what are you doing? How high can that fly? Where did you get it from? How can I make one? Um, you'll notice the two guys in the bottom right, well, they've gone now. Well, this is actually a lesson how not to do aerial imagery. Um, this was from the weekend just gone. Uh, 10,000 women running in Victoria Park. Um, Nike wanted me to fly this. I told him it was illegal. How about I make a balloon with your logo on the side? We'll get a camera on it and we'll fly it above the park. That's what happens in 60 mile an hour gusts. Um, it's, so, yeah. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs>